Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am club. I'm just up here at Bronte and uh, at sunrise let me just have a, a panning shot just to show you what's happening in the background. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. It's a bit cloudier earlier but the cloud has burnt off and uh, we have a magnificent sunrise happening. And uh, I'm up here on the cliff face at uh, Bronte, just overlooking the uh, Bronte pool down there, if you can see it. And I just did my maiden uh, voyage today with, the, uh, with my drone. Santa brought me a uh, DJI Mavic Mini 2 drone. And it's just uh, absolutely perfect for what I want to do especially with my gym's 5am clubs. I'll look at uh, taking some footage over the next uh, few months and look at ways of doing a voiceover just to see how it goes and if it works. Once again, one of my objectives is to highlight the beauties of Sydney as well as uh, complementing and supplementing those uh, beautiful images with some uplifting messages, messages of empowerment. Anyway, today I want to take you on another journey on a book summary on an absolutely wonderful book that I read a while ago. But uh, yesterday I, I went over the uh, book summary once again and it is absolutely jam-packed with uh, some powerful, powerful hacks that uh, it's so good that I've decided to uh, break it up and deliver it over 10 different gym's 5am clubs because as I said the messages uh, are just so powerful uh, so uh, so profound and so timely and useful especially in today's day and age where we're bombarded with uh, information with data with uh, opinions with views which uh, if, if they go unchecked can be quite uh, distressful to many people and cause anxiety. So let's uh, let's kick off, and I'll try and keep it uh, fairly short to uh, just maintain the momentum. Momentum. But the book that I'm referring to is called Factfulness. Factfulness, and it's written by an author named Hans Rosling. And this book, as I said, is really, really powerful. And I recommend I recommend you read the whole book, not just the book summary. But what I'll do with the book summary is just give you a taste for what's in the book to uh, then encourage you to, uh, to do some reading and to look at it a little, a little bit deeper. But the book Factfulness basically looks at 10, ten instincts that we humans have things which are wired into us to a certain extent, things that we've all been brought up on and if not managed can, can lead to our destruction and our depression and, and anxiety as I alluded to before. So this book looks at the 10 instincts that tend to distort distort our uh, perspective of the world and preventing uh, and prevent us from seeing the way the world really is and seeing the way things really are. So it's important to uh, understand that when we're brought up, we're brought up with certain uh, things which at the time are probably useful when we're growing up. But we outgrow these uh, things, but they remain instinctively attached to us. They remain connected to our DNA. And we can't shake it to a certain extent. But what this book at least does is it, it brings us to, to the awareness. It makes it top of mind. And it gives us an opportunity at least to test, to push back, and to question these instincts to allow us the freedom to be able to grow, develop and live a more meaningful life 
and to allow us to be leaders of note and not to be subjects of uh, the fear, uncertainty and doubt that's created by the media as well as people around us. You know, we've got uh, good meaning friends. We've got parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts and uh, don't get me wrong, they are good, well meaning. However, they are misguided. There are people out there who just take joy in, uh, in uh, sowing the seeds of fear, uncertainty and doubt. And I call them the Mr. Fuds or the Mrs. Fuds of the world. And for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, they want to push their fears, their uncertainties, their doubts, their anxieties on the rest of the people around them. And I'm not sure why they do it, because there's no benefit in doing it other than, of course, to be controlling. Because if they create fear, uncertainty and doubt, then they're in a better position to be able to exert influence and control over people and keep them exactly where they want them to be. But let's kick on and then what I'll do today in this session of Jim's 5am Club is I'll just read through the 10 instincts that distort our perspective of the world and prevent us from seeing things as they really are. And uh, on other Jim's 5am clubs, what I'll do is I'll do a deep dive on each one of these instincts so that we can really get into it, understand it, um, grow our awareness and learn ways of working around it. But not only learn ways of us working around it, learn ways in which we can identify it in other people around us and help them get around these instincts which create massive, painful distortions in their lives. So uh, the first instinct is called the gap instinct. And it's basically where we see the world as us versus them. And we either divide things into to different categories or uh, others divide things into categories and then all of a sudden we try and see things as being different when in actual fact the majority of things sit in the middle <laughs> and are the average and we've got things at either extreme but uh, the media and people around us try and force us to see things as being different with a big gap between one and the other which is not always the case the second thing that we, uh, the second instinct that distort the way we see the world is called the neg negativity instinct. And uh, we're, we're basically wired to see the bad things around us, to notice the dangers as opposed to the good things. So just being aware that we're wired to see the negatives, which is not always useful not always uh, um, uh, helpful, not always empowering, but to be aware that there is that sort of issue that we need to be um, um, uh, on the lookout for. The third instinct that the author talks about is called the straight line instinct, where the author says that uh, for many people, they seem to think that the past equals the future and what happened before or what has happened um, while they were growing up will continue unabated into the future in terms of a straight line. But nothing, nothing in the world ever happens in a straight line. And um, it's, it's often wrong to try and associate uh, the past with our futures because the future is unpredictable in many ways and the future never, never ever ends up being the way we uh, try, assess, try and assess it or try and view it anyway. But it's important to understand that there is no straight lines in, in the world. Everything is a, a different form of curve and there are ups and downs and roundabouts and all of these things that we need to take into consideration when making decisions and trying to ass assess the future. 
The fourth uh, instinct that the author talks about is called the fear instinct. And we have a tendency to focus our mind, minds on things that we're scared of. The babula, the bogeyman, uh, because that's how we've been brought up. And that's how we, uh, we're wired. You know, there's a part of our brain called the amygdala, amygdala, which is probably the size and the shape of an almond. But that part of our brain is, is, is there for a purpose, and that's to identify dangers and to activate our fear, our fears, which then activate our flight or response um, 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 uh, reactions in life. And that was used in the past, and it has been used in some cases to our benefit, to save us from dangerous situations. But for most of us, we live in fears. We are frozen in fear and we can't get to enjoy and to experience the fullness of life because of those fears. So uh, being aware that uh, we uh, are fear, fearful and those fears don't often serve us is also an important part of our growth and development. The fifth, the fifth uh, instinct that distort our realities is called the size instinct. And what the author alludes to here is that we always have problems in terms of uh, getting things into proportion and understanding the relativities of the things around us. And especially in today's day and age where mathematics is no longer a, uh, a compulsory subject at school, you know, children and many people around us uh, are, are, are suck at uh, understanding proportionality and we all often get things out of proportion which create fears, uncertainty and doubts which are unjustified. Anyway, that number six is called the generalization instinct and that's once again our, our ability, our good ability and also our bad ability to group things together and to generalize, which, uh, and often the case is, as the author suggests, is that we mistakenly group things together, which are very, very different and uh, non-comparable. So it's once again, putting it top of mind and giving us examples of where this can be erroneous and cause issues and challenges in our lives. The seventh instinct that the author talks about is called the, the uh, destiny instinct where we often get misguided and think that uh, the things just happen because that's how they've always been and that's all how they're always going to be. You know, uh, the past doesn't equal the future and we can make changes. We can make changes in a heartbeat. We can make changes in an instinct. We can, which can change not only our lives, but the lives of people around us. Number eight is called the single perspective, where we often just focus on a single thing and use that single thing or that one perspective that we have to, uh, to form the view of our, of our world and the worldview. And it's sometimes an issue with people who uh, who have one source of information or one source of uh, news um, um, uh, resource. So you need to have, you know, the ability to to uh, use critical thinking, have various sources of information and data, and be able to assess the validity of those uh, sources and not to rely on one source because by re relying on one source, relying on one person, we're relying by relying on one friend who's the fear monger, the Mr. Fudd or the Mrs. Fudd, is very, very dangerous. So we need to uh, widen our view and deepen our source of data and information to be able to think critically and not get sucked into uh, into the worldview that a few people around us try to push onto us. The ninth instinct which brings people undone is called the blame, the, the blame instinct, 
where we try to find simple reasons for the problems that we face and the things that cause us grief in the world. What we need to understand is that uh, things just happen sometimes. You know, the world is complex. The world is complicated. And you can't always find a simple thing to answer your questions or to um, push the blame onto. You know, by trying to blame somebody or blame something takes you away from the opportunity to, uh, to dig deeper and to understand the root cause, the real root cause. You know, a, a lot of the times the media, um, our, the FUD masters, the people around us, try to uh, align blame to get us to distract us, to uh, confuse us. So it's important not to be a person who relies on blame because blame can be something which is um, um, uh, damaging and will take you further from the truth and, and cause you to, uh, to search and, and look for answers in places where the answers probably don't exist in the first place. And the last thing on the list here is called the urgency instinct where we uh, focus on the danger, on the perceived danger, and nothing else. Uh, we need to understand that there are more things around us. There's good news, there are positive outcomes. There is, uh, there's beauty all around us. And if you're always focusing on the things which are urgent, you may, may be getting taken away from the things that are important in your life. So just because somebody else says to, uh, that something is urgent, doesn't mean that it's urgent to you. Uh, take the time to look around, take the time to prioritise the things in your life and to identify the things that are urgent and important to you that align with your values, your goals, your dreams and your actions. The author also mentions the importance to control our drama intake. As I said, we're, we're surrounded by drama queens, people who talk with authority, who think they know everything, but know jack shit. And uh, so we need to control our appetite for drama, and we need to mute the people around us who cause drama all the time. Because once you are attuned to a drama channel, once you uh, give permission to the drama uh, queens, the drama whores in our lives, then you'll be part of their drama, which you don't want to be part of. Because once you get sucked into that vortex, there's no getting out of it. Anyway, they were the 10 key instincts that influence our lives or potentially can influence our lives. And the author brings them to our attention. And the call to action is to be aware of them. Be aware of them, but don't allow them to overwhelm you. Don't allow them to overpower you. And don't allow them to take root in your life. Else you'll be enslaved to them for the rest of your life. Anyway, let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, and most importantly, let's take some of these lessons from this wonderful book called Factfulness by Hans Rosling. And um, be aware, be aware that there are a number of instincts, there are a number of things that are wired into us, that we need to be aware of, we need to shape, we need to redirect their energies and not use them um, at times where they uh, disadvantage us, but to uh, turn them around, turn them on their heads and use them to our benefit. And most importantly, be careful of the drama that we invite into our lives because the drama causes emotion. 
and the emo emotion leads to more drama, anxiety, pain, suffering. So learn to mute the drama. Learn to mute and eliminate the drama actors or the drama queens or the drama whores that try to suck you into their vortex. And that's about it. So thank you very much for joining me on this magical day down here at uh, Bronte. We had a few issues here over Christmas with uh, people uh, getting a little bit carried away with their social distancing. But hopefully we'll get this COVID uh, uh, cluster under control on the northern beaches and lead us to a, a uh, more calmer and a more purposeful 2021. So thank you once again. Yasas, good lucky from Jim's 5am club. And I look forward to coming to you again tomorrow from another location with another message. But as I said, what I'll do and what I promise to do, because it's worthwhile doing, is what I'm going to, uh, is to, is to take you on a journey. Take you on a journey and do a deep dive on each one of those 10 instincts, those 10 distortions that uh, cloud or influence our worldview and hopefully by being aware of them, by taking control of them, we can lead a better life, more peaceful life, and enjoy our 2021 with our friends and family, and to live, as I said before, in peace and harmony. Yasas, take care, kedaleme. Bye for now.